In a White House built by slaves, today an historic moment. Good afternoon. With the nation's first black vice president looking on, President Biden nominating the first black woman to the Supreme Court. I am truly humbled by the extraordinary honor of this nomination. Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson is a former clerk of the justice she would replace, Stephen Breyer, and rose to a seat on the U.S. Court of Appeals in D.C., the nation's second most powerful court. Among my many blessings, and indeed the very first, is the fact that I was born in this great country. The United States of America is the greatest beacon of hope and democracy the world has ever known. Her nomination, a milestone that many say has taken far too long to achieve. Of the 115 Supreme Court justices, 108 of them have been white men. Only five women have ever served, and only two of the justices have been black. For too long, our government, our courts, haven't looked like America. And I believe it's time that we have a court that reflects the full talents and greatness of our nation with a nominee of extraordinary qualifications. With her husband and one of her two daughters proudly looking on, Judge Jackson vowed to follow in the footsteps of Constance Baker Motley, the first black woman appointed as a federal judge back in 1966, and with whom Jackson shares a birthday. We were born exactly 49 years to the day apart. Today, I proudly stand on Judge Motley's shoulders, sharing not only her birthday, but also her steadfast and courageous commitment to equal justice under law. The 51-year-old Judge Jackson has almost a decade of experience on the federal bench, confirmed with Republican votes just last year to the D.C. Circuit, a stepping stone to the Supreme Court. Why did the president pick her? Judge Jackson was a front runner from the beginning. In some ways, she was created in a laboratory to replace Justice Breyer, right? Harvard, Harvard, a Breyer clerk herself. In fact, she'll be the third Supreme Court justice to replace the justice that they clerked for. Despite her elite legal pedigree, Jackson comes from a modest background. It's a story of someone who's, you know, always been very hardworking, um, you know, has not had things handed to her, has, has worked for all the things that she's achieved. She's kind of the American dream. She was born in 1970 in Washington, D.C., but raised in Miami, where she attended public schools. I am standing here today by the grace of God as testament to the love and support that I've received from my family. Her father, a teacher and later county school board attorney. Her mother, a public high school principal. Very proud of Katanji. Thanks to the community for just supporting her and uh, we're wishing her well. Today, Judge Jackson talked about her extended family, noting one of her uncles did time in prison. You may have read that I have one uncle who got caught up in the drug trade and received a life sentence. That is true. But law enforcement also runs in my family. In addition to my brother, I had two uncles who served decades as police officers, one of whom became the police chief in my hometown of Miami, Florida. Like eight current justices, Judge Jackson studied in the Ivy League, graduating in the top of her class at Harvard and serving as an editor of the Harvard Law Review. She credits Justice Breyer for helping shape her career. Justice Breyer, the members of the Senate will decide if I fill your seat, but please know that I could never fill your shoes. Jackson would bring fresh experience to the high court bench, having worked for three years as a federal public defender, something no justice has ever done before. Having lawyers who've done civil liberties work, who've done public defense, is really critical. You, you want to see how laws affect real people. It just gives you a perspective that is really important to have. What's the significance of her experience as a public defender? There's never been one on the court before. The Supreme Court hears so many criminal defense cases. And so look, when you have represented criminal defendants, you simply have a different perspective. Her legal decisions have been measured. Only 12 of her 600 opinions on the district court were reversed on appeal. She believes that the judiciary should be accessible and transparent, and I think that she really feels that people who come to the court or who interact with the 
judicial system, whether they are civil or criminal parties, that they feel heard. She is not someone who is, you know, kind of a firebrand <laughs> off on her own, um, you know, creating, doing new things. She absolutely, on the merits, should be a person who appeals to people of all political stripes. Joining Justice Clarence Thomas, she'll also highlight a diversity of Black legal thought. So the idea that there is one way of thinking, right, or behaving politically, all of that goes out of the window when now you have the two extremes of the ideological spectrum represented right, amongst the Black people on the court. So what, we'll, what we're seeing here really is the breadth and the diversity, um, but also the nuance of, of African Americans in, in political power. The judge and her husband, Patrick Jackson, a cancer surgeon, live in Washington. They have two daughters, ages 21 and 17. To my daughters, Talia and Layla, you are the light of my life. Please know that whatever title I may hold or whatever job I may, may have, I will still be your mom. That will never change. Her former clerks describe a warm and pragmatic judge and a consensus builder. Judge Jackson is sort of an endless well of energy, a committed wife, a committed mother. Her relationship with Dr. Jackson has been um, a really good role model for me. It's hard to have it all, but she certainly has found a way to balance. Even with her nomination, women like Jackson are still outliers in America's judicial system. Black women make up less than 1% of all active federal judges. By nominating Judge Jackson, President Biden fulfills a campaign promise made exactly two years ago ahead of the South Carolina primary. I'm looking forward to making sure there's a black woman on the Supreme Court to make sure we, in fact, get every representation. Not a joke. Not a joke. I pushed very hard for that. Now Senate confirmation is needed to finish the job. Democrats have the votes to do it alone, but will she win any support from the other side? She's been through three Senate confirmations already from different positions, bipartisan support each time. Do you think she'll get any Republican votes? I do think she'll get Republican votes. The question is, she got Collins, Murkowski, and Graham just 260 days ago. Will she be able to get all three of those? Are there different people who will come on board? But Senator Lindsey Graham today suggested he might not support her, saying in a statement her nomination means the radical left has won. Judge Brown Jackson's appointment, if it goes through, um, may change really the trajectory of Black women in law. It sends a signal to various institutions that actually Black women should be valued for what they contribute um, to, this, to this arena. That the days of undervaluing Black women, banning them from the highest reaches of power, that those days are over. A milestone moment 233 years in the making, with Black women gaining ground in the corridors of American power. If I'm fortunate enough to be confirmed, I can only hope that my life and career my love of this country and the Constitution and my commitment to upholding the rule of law and the sacred principles upon which this great nation was founded will inspire future generations of Americans. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.